never seen you in L.A. And uh, if things all work well, I might have something brand new for you to look at, not released yet. Thank you. Have a good day. Mm -hmm. Ah, my bags always get checked. All right, I just dropped some stuff off in the hotel room and now I'm off to meet Jason downstairs so he can show me some shit. Hi. Janet. Thank you for picking me up. You're welcome. I don't know why I just did that. But, uh, Your Corvette is so cool looking. I like it, you know, it's one of the new mid-engine ones, so. That's, uh, I you know, usually drive this or weird old cars, so there you go. Lift and push. This is my first time riding a Corvette. Oh, it's so nice in here. I'm so afraid to touch anything. It looks so beautiful. No, I mean, go ahead. This is, this is my daily car here, so it, it's got 10,000 miles on it. I drive it everywhere. And uh, how many Corvettes have you had? Too many. I've been driving for like 30 years. It's like... It, it's weird. I mean, I I tend to buy stuff kind of like what we do. I, I like to do high performance and affordable-ish, you know. So Corvettes and Camaros have always been kind of high performance and affordable-ish. So it's kind of like I think our Magni and Modi and stuff like that is high performance and affordable-ish. Affordable We're at Jack's Manufacturing, who does our PC boards. We've been literally working with them since the start, so they've been with us since we've been making part, you know, boards and parts in a garage. They take something like this, which is a bare board, bare PC board, and they turn it into something like this, which is a fully assembled PC board ready to go into a chassis. To do this, they have a number of processes. Uh, and in fact, it starts typically with surface mount devices. These are the small parts that just sit on the surface of the board. And to get them to stick to the board, they need to use solder paste. So they screen a board with solder paste. Then it goes into a pick and place machine. And the pick and place machine takes all of the individual parts, all of the individual surface mount parts, places them onto the board very precisely. It's, it's basically a fancy robot. Um, or not so, actually it's a not so fancy robot. After the pick and place machine is done, someone will actually inspect the board, make sure all of the surface mount parts are on the right in the right place. And then it will go through an oven. The SMD oven melts the solder paste, sticks all the SMD parts to the board, and then we end up with a board that's covered with SMD parts. It's not done there though yet. It's, there's more parts to be put on, typically the larger parts, uh, the transformers, the input jacks, the, you know, the, the AC inlet, the larger capacitors, all that has to either be put on by hand or with another automated process.
then from that, then it's run through either a selective solder machine or a, uh, a, or a wave solder machine that, that waves the entire bottom of the board. That's what JAX delivers to us. They deliver us boards that in some cases are programmed and, and ready to drop into a chassis and in some cases are, are parts of other larger assemblies. So now we're heading out to Bloomers. Uh, Bloomers Metal Stamping does pretty much all of our chassis. Uh, they're about five minutes away from you know, the shit factory in Valencia. Uh, they're about 35 minutes away from Jack's. Now we're here at Bloomer's Metal Stampings. We like to joke that they're one of the few that are crazy enough to try to do what we call consumer level finish on inexpensive products. Um, consumer level finish basically means the stuff is, it looks perfect when you take it out of, out of the box. You know, you, you're, anyone who's opened a box knows, you know, you want something that looks good when you get it. And that's great. Um, the thing is that usually you're gonna spend a lot of money to get something that looks perfect. And in this case, Bloomers has worked with us to develop processes that make it affordable and also have it, you know, be still perfect looking. And it might sound a little weird to be talking about affordable, you know, if we're looking at tier, you know, here. Um, but we gotta remember, Bloomers makes everything. They make, they make Magni up to tier. So they make a $99 product, they make a, a $3,200 a pair product. Um, Bloomer's been with us for a long time. Uh, we started going them about seven years ago when Magni uh, actually first, actually when Magni first started getting big enough in sales that we, we needed a more efficient way to do it. And since then they've worked with us to develop the processes to do our chassis. Um, what you're seeing on, in the case of Tier is the entire process. First, they take large sheets of metal, four by eight sheets of, of aluminum in this case, they shear it to size, to about a, a 16 inch blank uh, for, for tear. After the shearing's done, then they actually go over to a punch press. The punch press in this case is a 200 ton machine that basically punches all the holes, all the figures, all, everything that's important to the chassis in one shot. So now you have a flat piece with a lot of holes in it, um, but it's still not done. You're going to go to NC machining or CNC machining where most of the finer details are gonna be done. All of the, the edge work where we have chamfers and, and nice little details, that's all done with NC machining. Still a flat part, so now it needs to have some dimensionality put in it. We take it over to a press break and actually bend the front panel quite precisely. and then you end up with essentially a finished part, but it's still not finished. 
the finishing process actually isn't done here uh, because after this is done, after the banding is done, they actually go out to either have be anodized or to be powder coated. We have black powder coat and, and clear anodized for the silver finish. Um, they have to actually sort the products and say, these are good enough for silver, so send these out to silver, and these uh, can be powder coated. So there's another sorting you know, in there as well. Once, that, once that's actually done, it comes back to Bloomers. They silk screen the parts, right? you know, either our logos and identifying marks or on the back, you know, all the, the input output you know, terminology. When that's done, it goes in an oven, it's baked, and then it's you know inspected again and sent out to us. And then we finish it up. We take the chassis, marry it up with boards, test it from there. And uh, we'll see that a little later. Okay, so now we're here at Shit Audio in Valencia, California. This is where the parts from Jax and from Bloomers come together and actually make, in this case, a full tier. And that process starts with receiving, where we actually bring in the metal or bring in the board. It's inspected for quality. Inspected against what we actually ordered to make sure it's correct. From inspection, it goes to the warehouse, where we actually store all of our metal, uh, packing materials, and other, you know, and other stuff like uh, transformer. And it's held in the warehouse until it's time to build it, until we have everything. From there, it goes to production, where we do all the steps it takes to complete a tier and that would start with programming the board. The strange part is uh, Tier actually uses firmware. All of our power amps use firmware, but a, a lot of traditional power amps, you wouldn't actually have a microprocessor controlling everything, but Tier does. So programming it and actually having it confirm that it's, that it's working is really important. After programming, it's checked with a the FLIR thermal camera to ensure that it's operating properly. After the FLIR, then the board is installed into a chassis and other operations are done. Such as putting in the front panel board. small auxiliary heat sink onto the board as well with a, with a thermal pad. From there, you actually get to the marriage of the heat sinks and the chassis. That, that's actually more important than it seems. I mean, you think heat sink, who cares? But heat sink is actually structurally part of the chassis. It's very important. And so they mount up the heat sinks, essentially mock them up, uh, make sure the, the clips go over the output devices, and then later they'll tighten up all of the output devices in sequence um, so that 
there's equal pressure being put on those and also so that it's attached to the chassis. From there, they're, they're going to actually do something. It's, it's really kind of silly. It's a transformer feature. We put in an in, inner piece of steel that goes over the transformers, kind of covers them up a little bit. Let's, let's face it, they're not, not the most exciting looking things on the planet. So we take that, put it over the transformer, but it does one really important thing. It actually allows a lot more airflow out of the chassis. Um, the, the transformer feature has a perf that actually sits way below the, the top and that get, lets us actually get a lot more air out of the chassis. And you'll notice here has perf all over it, front, back, sides, you know, top, bottom, uh, because it does actually run pretty hot and needs to move a lot of air. From there, we're going to get into final assembly. Then we'll be putting the top on. When the top's on, the assembly's complete and it should turn on just like it did when we programmed it. And when it does, then it's ready to go on the burn rack. 55 pounds, never felt so light. <laughs> All products are burned in for one to four days, depends on the product. And why one to four? Because Mike used to do four, and then we do a minimum of one. Sometimes, if it's slow, we'll leave them on for four days. If it's fast, they go on a minimum one day. This helps us catch any kind of early failures uh, that might happen. So they're just literally stuck on a rack, turned on, and forgotten about for a day. After that, uh, it goes to QC. Uh, it's what we used to call sound check. Uh, but uh, after that, tier goes to QC. Because of the weight of tier, about 55 pounds, uh, we actually bought carts, uh, motorized carts to help people take them to the floor and lift them up. Uh, because, you know, let's face it, a pair of them are very, very heavy. QC actually listens to every product, just like uh, every, you know, anything we make. Um, tier is going to be listened to, and in some cases measured. Uh, tier will be measured on a sampling basis. The main thing is to plug it in, turn it on, listen to it, make sure there's nothing odd going on, no noise, no distortion. People are listen to whatever they want, and um, it's, it's fun. We have a wide variety. Of, uh, of music that people listen to. While it's in QC, uh, it will also get cleaned and ready to go because now it really is an amp that uh, can, be, can be shipped. From there it goes to finished goods where it, it's going to be packed into a box. of tier, it's a, a big heavy duty uh, cardboard box uh, with handles because the thing weighs a ton. Then it basically sits and waits for someone to order it. And in the case of tier, you order two of them since it's mono and you need two of them for stereo. And that's how you get one tier. You just repeat it 250 times and <laughs> there's a run. Tier. This is really the craziest thing we've ever done. It's, it's the summation of like 30 years of Mike bothering me to make a choke input power amp. It's the summation of, you know, several years of shit doing less expensive amps. This thing is kind of like our big shot on amps, and we really hope you like it.
No, she wasn't filming yet. Okay, I'm filming now. So just look like serious. Sir. Okay. Do, your, do your thing. Okay, that looks too like crazed. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Like so? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> So why don't we say made in USA? Why does it say assembled in USA? Well, it's because qualifying for made in USA is very difficult. You basically have to have 100% of everything made in the USA. And while Tier has transformers made here in California, chassis made in California, boards made in California, not every single component is made in California or the USA. So the little resistors on the board, they may come from, actually a lot of them come from Japan. Um, a lot of them come from countries other than ours. You know, it is, a, um, it is actually a global economy and we're not afraid to say that. We like to tell you where our stuff is assembled or made or as we say, designed and built in California in the case of Tier. Which is, I think, accurate because the vast majority of cost goes to U.S. companies. Some people, you know, a lot of people in the world are not going to care about that. I get it. That's fine. We're not bashing anyone else. We're just saying our stuff's made here. If it matters to you, that's great. And if it's, you know, if you're in the U.S. and you care, that's great. If you're outside the U.S. and you care, that's great. And if not, that's also great. There's tons of other great products out there. And we just like to say, this is where we're made. Want a piece of shit to add to your own shitter? We've got three shit branded toilet paper rolls. Like this one, to give away. To enter, drop your shit related dad joke in the comment section below and we'll pick the three funniest a week after this video goes live. But please try to keep it family friendly. Good luck.